If you watched my Fishing for Gold video for WoW Classic, you learned just how much gold you can make through your fishing and cooking professions. Hello everyone, my name is Icosiol, and today I'm going to show you how to once again fish for your fortune in the Burning Crusade. In my Burning Crusade fishing and cooking guide, I showed you everything you needed to know in order to increase both secondary professions to 375 as easy as possible. To watch that video, if you're not yet maxed in skill, you can click on the card above or the link in the video description below. In this video, we're going to talk about the following topics. What I will be showing you are the important fish and items that you will want to keep track of on your auction house. The prices of each item can vary wildly from server to server and from phase to phase, so make sure you're going after the more lucrative items for the server you play on. Remember that before you sell anything, be sure to look at which is selling for more, the raw fish or the cooked version of it. Now let's get started by first discussing your required fishing skill level by zone. In order to maximize your gold earning potential, you'll want to make sure you don't lose any fish, and to do that, you need to fish at a specific skill level for the zone you're fishing in. In order to increase your skill beyond 375, you need to win items from the Stranglethorn Fishing Extravaganza, complete specific quests, and earn some items from the fishing dailies given to you by Old Man Barlow in Terracar. I go into detail about all of these in previously made videos and you can find links to those in the video description below. Shown here for each zone is the skill level you will need in order to not lose any fish for that zone. You'll see Zangar Marsh is 400 to not lose a fish, but in order to begin catching fish in that zone, you only need a skill of 305. Now these minimums will get higher as you move to higher level areas within the zone such as Marshlight and Sporewind Lake with a minimum of 355 and a 100% catch rate of 450. For any location that requires flight to get to a lake or river such as Skedis and Terracar Forest, you will need a maximum skill of 527 in order to not lose any fish. In order to reach that number, you will need these items equipped. So, if you haven't been competing in the fishing extravaganza, you might want to go ahead and get started. Now that you know what fishing skill you need, let's start talking about what you can catch to earn some gold. Unlike in classic vanilla where some fish would be wanted for alchemy products or be the sole providers of specific buffs, a lot of new fish actually share stat buffs with other cooked foods. This unfortunately lowers their value as there is far more product to meet the demand of the players, but there are some standout fish such as the golden darter. This fish is best found in schools of darter in the rivers of Terracar Forest, but can also be found in brackish and highland mixed schools as well as the open waters of Zangar Marsh and Nagrand. I will talk about the mixed schools in more detail later in this video. The golden darter is the reagent needed to make golden fish sticks, which is the primary food for healers, and the only food buff that provides the plus 44 to healing. In 2007, I was making around 2 gold per fish, while the fish sticks would often fetch near 3 gold individually, but we'll have to see if it continues to sell that well in 2021 and 22. Hanks have two food buffs to choose from, and both come from fishing. The first is the Furious Crawdad, which can only be caught in Highland Mix schools found in the three lakes high above Terracar. The Furious Crawdad can make the Spicy Crawdad, which grants a plus 30 stamina bonus, which every tank will want to be using. The Furious Crawdad should sell between 3 and 4 gold per item, whereas the Cooked version may sell for 4 to 5 gold per item. The other tank food is the Fisherman's Feast, which provides the same stamina buff as the Spicy Crawdad. To make this, you need to catch huge spotted felltail, and for each one you catch, you will make six fishermen's feast after you purchase the other reagents. Your best chance of catching the huge spotted felltail is in highland and brackish mixed schools. You can also catch it in open waters, but it's far more rare than if you farm strictly from the mixed schools. Because this is such a rare fish to catch, you should see sale prices of near 6 gold per fish, but the Fisherman's Feast will likely sell for far less. 
That's because one huge spotted felltail will create six fishermen's feast, which drastically lowers its cost. So be sure you check the auction house before you go and cook up a bunch of feast. One fish that can be immensely profitable, or drastically not, is the crescent tail skullfish. It can be cooked to make skullfish soup, which is the only food that provides a plus 20 spell critical strike buff. That rarity can make this fish very profitable when cooked, but what could make it not worth much is that spell critical strike is not typically wanted over a spell damage buff. Your best location to catch this fish is in the waters next to Karazhan in the Deadwind Pass. The fish alone will likely not sell for much more than a gold per fish, but in 2007 I saw the skullfish soup swing wildly from 1 gold per item to 6 gold per item. It wouldn't hurt to have a stack or two of the skullfish soup and just monitor your market for when you can make the most profit. If you pay attention to gold farmers, you'll hear them talk a lot about the elemental plateau and farming elemental moats for primal elements. This area is always extremely contested and if you're on a PvP server, you will see factions get into massive battles just to secure the area for themselves. However, you being the supreme angler that you are, you can fish up moats of water from pure water nodes found in Nagrand, Terakar Forest, Zangar Marsh, and Netherstorm. These are rare to find, so I wouldn't suggest you skip everything else just to fish from these as you will lose gold per hour doing it that way. Instead, just be on the lookout and fish from them once discovered. Moats of water and primal water can vary on sale price by a wide margin, so I just wanted to bring to your attention the pure water nodes so that you don't pass them up. Highland mixed schools are perhaps your most lucrative fishing schools to fish from, but there are two problems you'll have to deal with when farming these schools. The first is they're located in the three lakes above Terracar and require a minimum of a 527 fishing skill to not lose any fish. Secondly, there's not that many schools up at one time to consistently farm from, and on top of that, they're a highly competitive farm. The four lucrative fish that can drop from Highland Mix schools are the Furious Crawdad, Golden Darter, Huge Spotted Felltail, and Moat of Water. I highly recommend that when you're passing through Terracar, you fly by and see what you can find, and then move on to some of the other farms on this list. Just be sure to frequently pass by and catch what you can. Brackish Mix schools are similar to the Highland schools, but do not drop any Furious Crawdads. They're a lot easier to find, and depending on the zone, you'll find it a lot easier to catch due to needing a lower fishing skill. You're going to find these schools mainly in Zangar Marsh and Terracar Forest. The Brackish Mix School also serves as your best chance of finding the Golden Scale Venderfish, which can be vendored, as its name says, for 6 gold. The Steam Pump Flotsam is the TBC version of the classic Pool of Wreckage, and they're primarily found in the waters of Zangar Marsh. I do remember other types of wreckage pools appearing in Terracar and Nagrand, but honestly can't find any evidence of their existence on any TBC database, so we'll just have to see. The Flotsam will potentially drop moats of water, huge spotted felltail, enormous barbed gill trout, inscribed scroll case, or a golden scale vendor fish. But what you're really after are the heavy supply crate and curious crate. The heavy supply crate can contain many useful items for blacksmiths and engineers, such as fell iron ore, elemental blasting powder, and a handful of fell iron bolts. The curious crate, on the other hand, will also drop fell iron ore, but also nether weave cloth and not hide leather scraps. All of these items tend to be in high demand, so they're an easy sell. However, there's often an abundance of them on the auction house, which can drop the sale price considerably. So just keep an eye on the market and determine for yourself if fishing from a steam pup flotsam is worth your time on your server. The following fish have a lot of competition foods that provide the same stat buffs when consumed and thus tends to lower their value, but you should absolutely keep an eye on your market for them. The first is Spotted Felltail, which can be cooked to make the Felltail Delight that provides the smaller stamina buff of plus 20. You can catch these in brackish mixed schools or in the open waters of nearly every zone. Nagrand has a nice route of potentially lucrative fish should other areas be too crowded with competition. The first is Icefin Bluefish, which can be cooked to make the Poached Bluefish that provides a plus 23 spell damage buff. 
two other cooking recipes provide that same stat buff though, which brings down its sale price. The Icefin is best caught by fishing in bluefish schools found in Negron, but needs around a 490 fishing skill to not lose a fish from the school. Because this fish is not only difficult to fish for, and its food buff having competition from cheaper foods, you're not going to farm specifically for it as it just won't typically earn you enough value for your time. What does help you earn gold while fishing in Negrand is by also fishing up the Fig Luster's Mudfish found in Mudfish schools. The Mudfish will make plus 20 agility food called Grilled Mudfish. Its only other competition is the Warp Burger, and with rogues, kitty druids, and hunters wanting this buff, the Mudfish or its cooked version can still earn you a decent amount of gold for your time. In addition to this Negron farm, you may potentially find pure water nodes, which will further increase your earnings, so don't pass up any fishing pool while making your rounds around Negrand. Zangar Marsh is home of the Zangarian Sporefish, which can be cooked to make the Blackened Sporefish, which provides the only plus 8 MP5 food buff in TBC. However, for the same reasons as the Skullfish Soup, this buff is not typically sought after as casting and healing classes are looking for more spell damage and bonus healing buffs instead. This fish is best found in sporefish schools, and while you can also catch it in the open waters of Zangar Marsh, its drop rate is very low, and you would catch far more trash fish than anything else. If you're doing your fishing rounds in Zangar Marsh, you're likely after the steam pump flotsams, so if you do see sporefish schools, don't skip them. Fishing from sporefish schools will help spawn more flotsams in the zone for you. The last notable fish to discuss is the Bloodfin Catfish, which can be cooked to make the Broiled Bloodfin, which offers the unique plus 8 resistance to all schools of magic. This fish can be caught in the open waters near Karazhan and near Zulaman when Phase 4 is released. This is kind of an odd buff though, and honestly, I'm not too sure when folks might use it. The TBC private servers are showing it's selling between a gold or two per cooked item, so like the others on this final list, it's something to keep an eye on in classic TBC. Thank you very much for watching this TBC edition of Fishing for Gold. If you enjoyed this video, please make Old Man Barlow proud and give it a like, subscribe, and click on that bell to be notified of new content I create for Classic TBC. You can follow me on Twitter at Ecosio Classic Wow or join my Discord with the link provided below. For some of my other content, you can click on any of these links here. Thank you again for watching, and remember the reason why sardines are the stupidest fish in the sea is because they climb into tins, close the lid, and leave the key outside. <laughs>